Just the one white dot. Watch out for my body rolls. When I was purging, this one had a loose string filament just kind of lay across the bed. And, um, well, this is what you get for not babysitting the first few layers, but doesn't affect anything mechanically. Nothing that can't just be uh, broken off. These compliant mechanisms, I think, will get a little weaker over time, but should still have enough holding power to properly um, latch in place. Not a fan of these teeth right here, but if we don't have them, then um, we don't have like um, a meshing force that holds it together at that seam. And it's not too bad, but you do get a little of, you know, this action here. This can like get pushed and slipped under. This is an old test design. You can see this uh, hinge had issues. But I mean, yeah. So that's what the teeth are for. Yeah, there's a bit of overhang here so we can just, you know, expand it out a bit more so that these tiny M2 screws can fit in. Same here, a little overhang issue, locking the bore. All right, uh, test with PETG material. Not really a fan of using this uh, clear filament here. Um, it clashes with the white, and uh, I don't like seeing the infill. And you see uh, some of the burnt material um, got trapped inside, which is, it happens, but now you're stuck with, what's this paper? Um, but now you're stuck with like having to look at it encased inside, it's, it's yeah. And uh, so the ability to do a graphic on it and just cut it into the hinges uh, with booleans uh, works decently. Everything works mechanically, it, it feels normal, even the parts that, like, where there are color changes on the hinges, which is not ideal, but I don't think, I, I don't think there's a clean way, like an elegant way to avoid that, so I just went with it. It's kind of an eccentric design. It's more focused on being mechanically elaborate than it is um, being intuitive. So if you hand this off to somebody, be prepared to tell them how this works ahead of time. It's very possible they might not know up from down with this thing if they're seeing this for the first time. And if you hand it off to them and they're playing around with it, you know, that could be your eyewear.
As far as protections, um, again, it's more for rule of cool, mechanically elaborate. Um, it does have some crushing and impact protection, uh, but you know, uh, I can't make any guarantees on uh, really anything. Uh, so, you know, be careful with your eyewear. Remember, throw in a cloth to wrap your glasses and it, you know, it's just generally nice to have to wipe the lenses every now and then. And for the most part, uh, this will index correctly, but sometimes it can like, you know, go over a bit, go under a bit, um, you know, just look out for that. As far as the cross section though, there is um, like a reference or a gauge that you can print out. It'll describe the usable cross section for the volume where the glasses can go. Just thread the glasses through real quick to check. If it barely fits and it's butting against the edges, just remember that um, it may still be too large for this case in that there is a bit of flex against crushing force, and so that will transfer to the glasses if they are pressed right against the walls. And the project also has a file called the Mechanical Test, and that's basically if you just want a small-scale demo of the mechanisms or if you want to see um, how dialed in your printer is to be able to print this correctly. These are kind of a long print. Um, without input shaping, it's six and a half hours. So these at 20% infill, a little less than a third of the material of the plastic and a third of the print time. So if you just wanna see how it would work out first before investing in an entire print, um, it's an option. A little fun to play with too.